Hello, and welcome to Forte State University's rules meeting for intramural outdoor soccer. My name is Brooks Zigelmeyer, and I'm going to run through the rules with you. It is your responsibility as captain to know the rules and to make sure your team knows the rules so that everybody can play and have a good time while being safe. Let's begin. First off, National Federation High School Rules will govern all play for any rule not mentioned in the following FHSU IM Rec rules. All rules are subject to change at the discretion of the FHSU IM Rec administrative staff. Starting and finishing, a team shall consist of eight men or women. There will be a limit of 12 people per roster. A game may not start if a team has less than six legal players. A game may be complete with no less than five players on any one team. Forfeit time. One goal will be awarded for every two minutes a team is late to start a game. Ten minutes past game time will result in a forfeit. The final score will be 5-0. General rules. Goalkeeper. The goalkeeper may not handle the ball if it has been intentionally kicked or thrown to him or her by a teammate. It will result in a penalty indirect kick. From the moment the goalkeeper takes control of the ball with his or her hands, he or she will be penalized for holding or bouncing the ball for more than six seconds. Again, that will be enforced with an indirect kick. To kick the ball off, it must roll forward. The player who kicked the ball may not touch the ball until another player touches the ball. Violation of this rule will result in a retake of the kickoff. Slide tackling. Slide tackles are illegal and will be penalized appropriately at the referee's discretion. Goalies are allowed to slide feet first, but only to play the ball. Rule number four, a goal is scored when the ball completely crosses the line. Five, a ball is out of play when it completely crosses the sideline or the end line. Six, the official blowing his or her whistle will warrant a dead ball even if the whistle is inadvertent. To restart play, the following methods are used. A throw-in, when the ball crosses the sideline. During the throw-in, if the thrown ball never enters the field of play, the throwing team will retake the throw-in. A goal may not be scored by the throw-in. A goal kick, when the ball crosses the inline and the offense touched the ball last. The ball is placed on the inline closest to the side where the ball went out of bounds. The ball must be kicked beyond the penalty area or the kick will be retaken. Corner kick. When the ball crosses the inline and the defense touched the ball last, the ball is placed on or in the corner arc. Direct or indirect free kicks when a foul has been called. Or a drop ball. When play is stopped due to an injured player, inadvertent whistle, or it is not clear who touched the ball before it went out of bounds. The ball cannot be kicked until it touches the ground. Rule 8. The ball is still in play if it stays in bounds after rebounding off the goal, official, or corner flag posts. 9. Teams are responsible for retrieving the ball and returning it to the goalie or official. If excessive delays occur, the official will stop the clock and a yellow card will be issued to the player causing the delay. Moving on to game time. Each half will be 20 minutes in length with a continuous running clock. Half time will be 3 minutes. The clock will stop at the discretion of the officials for all injuries. Any additional time will be added at the discretion of the FHSU IM Rex officials. Timeouts will not be allowed. Teams will change ends at halftime. The team that did not kick off in the first half will kick off in the second half. Moving on to penalties. Kicking, striking, and tripping are illegal and will result in direct kicks. Denying an obvious goal-scoring opportunity through such action will warrant a red card and an ejection. Rule 15, Handling. A player shall be penalized for intentionally handling, carrying, striking, or propelling the ball with a hand or arm 
and result in a direct kick. Unintentional handling occurs when the ball strikes the hands or arms of a player who has not moved the hands or arms to play the ball. This shall not be penalized. Any intentional handball that prevents a goal from being scored, either a shot on goal or a pass to another player with an open shot, will warrant a red card and an ejection. Charging. A player shall not intentionally charge an opponent unfairly. An unfair charge is one in which a player does not use shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder contact with an opponent of, excuse me, in which a player does not use shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder contact with an opponent and does not have arms or elbows close to the body. That will be penalized with a direct kick. Any player who flagrantly charges an opponent shall receive a red card. A player shall not charge into the goalkeeper in the penalty area. That also will result in a direct kick. Rule 17, dangerous play. In the opinion of an official, all high kicks above the waist in a dangerous manner will be prohibited. In addition, a player lying on the ground may not attempt to play the ball if other players are nearby. That also will result in an indirect kick. Rule 18, obstruction. A player who does not have possession of the ball may not intentionally run between an opponent and the ball or use his or her body as an obstacle. That will result in an indirect kick. Moving on to misconduct. A player shall be given a yellow card for persistent infringement of the rules of the game, acting in an unsportsmanlike manner, and or objecting by word of mouth or action to the decision given by a game official. A player shall be given a red card for persistent misconduct, exhibiting violent conduct, and or using violent or abusive language. A red card or second yellow card will result in an automatic ejection from the game. In addition to these rules, beginning in the 2019-2020 season, these additions have been made. If a team in a single game has two players ejected for either red cards or as a result of yellow card accumulation or a combination thereof, the game will be forfeited. Also, if a team has four players ejected during the course of the season, either as a result of red cards or yellow card accumulation, the team will be removed from the league and will be charged forfeit fees for the remainder of the regular season. Rule 20, if a player is issued a red card or second yellow card, then he or she will not be allowed a replacement. In addition to these rules, in 2019 and 2020 season going forward, a red card or second yellow will result in an automatic suspension from the league. The following chart will be used to determine punishment for acts seen as inappropriate. A red card or two yellow cards in the same game, that participant is done for the night. Before playing again, they must be cleared to play again by the FHSU IMREC director. Two red cards or four yellow cards equals an automatic two-game suspension and orange suit probation. For orange suit probation, the individual shall officiate as a center official one full night of intramural soccer. At least one of those games is required to be their team, and the individuals are required to wear a special uniform provided by the IM Rec office. Three red cards or six yellow cards will equal an automatic suspension from the league. For exceptionally flagrant acts or items not explicitly covered, additional and or stricter consequences may be determined by the FHSU IM Rec director. Moving on to Rule 21, offsides. When in opponent's half of the field and in possession of the ball, player must be behind the ball before playing it. If ahead of the ball, there must be two opponents between the player and the goal. Otherwise, it is offside. A player is not offside if there are two opponents near the goal than he or she is. They are in their own half of the field. The ball last touches an opponent or the ball is received directly from the referee on a goal kick, throw-in, corner kick, etc. Scoring. 
Rule 22, scoring and timing. The runner, the running score on the score sheet is the official score. If there is a discrepancy on the score sheet or the scoreboard, the running score sheet shall be official. Mercy Rule. If a team is winning by five goals or more during the final two minutes, the game will be over. If a team is winning by eight goals or more at halftime, the game will be over. Moving on to free kicks. There are direct kicks. A goal may be scored against the offending team on a direct kick and indirect kicks where a goal may not be scored unless the ball is played by another player from either team. Rules for a free kick. Opposition players must be at least 10 yards from the ball when it is kicked. Any player of the offended team may take a free kick and it may be in any direction. Direct kick offenses include tripping an opponent or intentionally kicking an opponent deliberately handing the ball, pushing or holding, charging the goalkeeper in possession of the ball, striking or attempting to strike an opponent, jumping at an opponent, using foul or abusive language, slide tackling with excessive or dangerous contact, or any other unsportsmanlike act. Indirect free kick offenses include entering the field of play without permission, the same player playing the ball after a free kick, penalty kick, goal kick, corner kick, or throw in before another player plays the ball. Kicking or attempting to kick the ball while it is in possession of the goalkeeper. Obstruction, dangerous play, and delay of game will also be penalized by indirect free kicks. Also, indirect free kicks may result from goalkeepers illegally handling the ball after relinquishing possession, or goalkeepers handling an intentional pass or throw-in. Moving on to penalty kicks. A penalty kick is awarded for any direct kick offense by the offending team within their penalty area. It can be awarded regardless of the position of the ball if the infraction by the defending team is committed in the penalty area. The penalty kick is taken from the penalty line mark on the field. All players, except for the kicker and goalkeeper, must be outside the penalty area. The goalkeeper must stand on his or her goal line until the ball is kicked. If the ball hits the goal post or crossbar and returns to play, the kicker may not play the ball until there is another player who has played it. If there is an infringement by the defending team and the goal is scored, the goal will count. If the goal is not scored, there will be a re-kick. If there is an infringement by the attacking team and the goal is scored, the goal will not count and the kick shall be retaken. If the goal is not scored, there is no re-kick. In cases where players from both teams are guilty of infringements, the kick shall be retaken regardless of the outcome of the kick. Moving on to equipment. Each team is encouraged to wear a similar colored shirt. Pennies will be provided. Goalkeepers must wear a different colored shirt than their teammates. Shoes must be worn by all participants. Rubber cleared shoes and screw in cleats will be allowed. Metal cleats of any kind, open heel and or toe shoes are prohibited. Build hats, casts, and or any other item Deemed dangerous by the FHSU IM Rec official may not be worn during a game. Shin guards are highly recommended. All jewelry is prohibited. This will result in the player's dismissal from the field. Players will not be allowed a replacement until the next opportunity for legal substitution. <laughs> Moving on to substitutions. A team must notify the official on all substitutions. No player may come onto the field without permission of the official. Substitutes must enter and exit the field at midfield. Teams may substitute under the following conditions. They may substitute on either team's goal kicks or their own corner kick or throw in. Also, when a player has been injured, the team may sub for the injured player. When a player has been warned, that team may sub one player for each player warned. After goal, both teams may substitute. 
Moving on to overtime procedure, there will be no overtime period in case of a tie game after regulation. Kicks from the penalty mark will determine the winner. Each team will have five kicks from the penalty mark to be administered as a normal penalty kick would during regulation. The team with more goals at the end of five kicks will be the winner. If tied after the original five kicks, sudden death penalty kicks will be taken. That is, one kick for each team at a time to determine the winner. All team members are eligible to take penalty kicks. For Co-Rec soccer rules, this is also an 8 on 8 game and National Federation High School rules will govern all play or rule not mentioned in the FHSU IM Rec rules. Again, all rules are subject to change at the discretion of the FHSU IM Rec administrative staff. In Correct Soccer, teams shall be comprised of four men and four women, minimum of three persons from each gender. A game may not start with less than six legal players, three males and three females, and may not be completed with fewer than five players, three females and two males. Thank you for watching the FHSU I Am Rec Outdoor Soccer Rules Meeting. Good luck and have fun.